And Dar, I also uh, congratulate you and thank you for the work that you're doing. That's right. Yeah. And um, I, I guess when I listen to you uh, talk about these atrocities and you make the connections to the psychologist or psychiatrist to the Nazi regime, one obviously makes those kind of parallels in their mind, that we are in fact living in a very dark age. You can say we've come full circle from the age of rationalism to the age of irrationalism or the world of irrationalism. And, and you mentioned the two-party system in the United States, and it seems that here... Yeah, in quotes, yeah, in quotes. Well, exactly. And indeed, one wonders if you're going to overthrow empire, if we're actually going to defeat this empire, and we're very much linked to it. We're deeply integrated into that empire, and the government is deeply integrated with the U.S. state at all levels. Does your reportage, and or, or let's put it this way, does your mind turn to the problem of how we actually take control of public affairs? How do the people of the United States of America actually come to center stage? How do we end our marginalization as citizens in a state that disregards us completely at literally every level and most certainly at the level of making foreign policy and engaging in wars? And I'd like you to speak to that a little bit. But just before I give you the mic back, I just want to say that those of you who have friends that might want to hear Dar and aren't here tonight, you'll get a chance to hear them on CFRO 102.7 FM on Monday morning at 7.30 and a week this Wednesday between 7 and 8 p.m. in the evening and tell your friends to turn in to, to Dar Jamal on Co-op Radio. Thanks, Dar. Um, thanks, for the that was a big thanks for the easy question, Charles. Appreciate that. Um, I'll try to pay you back when I'm on your show. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a bugger of a question. I, I've kind of given up on the big picture thing and I, because I think that you know the U.S. empire, and it's so globalized at this point, and they have been so effective at integrating other people into it, either by debt or you know other, other types of things, like how they've integrated Canada into it. But... Um, I guess I've, I've just gone all the way back down to a grassroots level that when I'm going around the U.S., I'm doing, I'm basically offering people two things that I think that are important that people do. And, and, and they're based on, I'll get to those in a second, but they're basically based on the premise that, you know, the empire is collapsing. I mean, it's, it's in its twilight. It's going downhill. When an empire has to start using military might to try to keep control, that's the final stage. And that's what the U.S. is doing, and that hence the bellicose rhetoric towards Iran, et cetera. But, uh, you know, the U.S. dollar, I mean, now, you know, I'm going to start asking you guys for money. And uh, last time I was here, I was joking with Irene. Last time I was here about a year and a half ago, I mean, for a dollar, I got about a dollar thirty-five Canadian. Now it's one to one. I mean, it's going down every week. And, and the U.S. economy, it's, it's in a recession. This talk that it's coming is, is nonsense. I mean, the empire is going down. And the, the second that the, the that oil is pegged to other currencies and not just the petrodollar, it's over. And, and I think that trying, it, like the Iraqi resistance, you don't go head to head with the most powerful apparatus on the planet. I just, you know, you, you build the alternative and you take what shots you can, but really you work on building the alternative. And the two things I've been telling people is, one, like supporting uh, the, the GI resistance during Vietnam. I mean, there were, there were two key things that ended the Vietnamese War. One, a fierce Vietnamese resistance, and two, a fierce GI resistance. I mean, by the end of Vietnam, half the U.S. troops on the ground wouldn't follow orders. It's pretty hard to fight a war when half your troops won't follow orders. And there's a similar, like VVAW, Vietnam Veterans Against the War, there's Iraq Veterans Against the War in the U.S. today. They're a very small, budding organization. But their membership has doubled every year since they were formed. Um, it's now up over 650 people. Uh, it's it's, it's pro likely to triple this year if trends continue. They're getting between 10 and 15 new members a week, and the fastest growing segment of their population are active duty forces. So I'm encouraging people to go to IVAW.org, support them, ask them what you can do to help. In Canada, there is still stuff that you can do to help, and I know there are people here already doing some of that work. And the other thing I'm telling people is just organize locally, um, because building community and having connections and doing things from grassroots levels are, I, I think, really the only legitimate way to get things done. And, and if everyone's doing that, we don't need to worry about the big picture. <laughs>